horror in Christchurch this afternoon after shootings at two mosques in the city. We saw people lying around us in shock. Blood, blood coming out from the neck. The number of people who have died in this awful event uh, has now risen to 50. The Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has described it as one of New Zealand's darkest days and says it is clear it can only be described as a terrorist attack. Today I'm announcing that New Zealand will ban all military-style semi-automatic weapons. We will also ban all assault rifles. We will ban all high-capacity magazines. In short, every semi-automatic weapon used in the terrorist attack on Friday will be banned in this country. People was crying and screaming and bad big sound, bang, bang, bang. And it was horrible. I was lying on, on the floor. One of my friends has been killed and our Imam was there also to help him. Because before I had no idea that people might have that much gun. It should be under tight law. Of course, if you can do it quickly, it will be really good for this country, for the future. Amazing. You can come here and buy things that he couldn't buy in Australia. That's why New Zealand becomes a target. I've been a Minister of Police in two separate terms. I've been Minister of Justice. Police have been warning for years about the situation. The government has indicated it wants to have everything passed in law by the 11th of April. It can be a very quick process, and that quick process uh, can happen so fast that people don't always know it's happened. I've certainly, as a Minister of Police, when I've tried to change gun laws, have listened to every argument about the US Second Amendment to their constitution, having to point out just every now and again that we are not part of the United States. I think in this place, politics has come into gun reform, when actually this is something that's far too serious for politics. Particularly, some parties have been more concerned with a hunting and fishing vote, um, and also some of them own very serious weaponry themselves. These things are assault rifles. I've said, you know, what, what do you think the deer's going to do? Shoot back? There's Tough Nut. Who owns Tough Nut, mate? So really, it's no wonder you like cows. It's no wonder you're so brave, isn't it? Your name's Turnbull. <laughs> I'm viewed as a hero by those who are pro-gun. What? <laughs> and I'm viewed as a villain by those who are anti-gun. I have a chain of gun stores called Gun City. I started in 1978. What's so neat about the firearms industry? Number one, you're dealing with a really classy citizen, okay? He's not coming to me because he's got a broken car or a broken tooth. He's coming to me because he's worked so hard that he's got a bit of disposable income and he wants to have something he can go and have fun with. Well, how much fun is it to help someone have fun? This particular law is drafted and given two days, two days for submissions. We all know that it's physical impossibility for them to have read and digested 12,000 submissions by the time it's going to Parliament next week. I don't doubt that if we had the legal cleverness, the financial muscle of the NRA, that 
this trampling of our rights wouldn't be going on. Like, how many of those 250,000 licensed firearms owners are gonna stand in front of a camera or stand in front of a select committee? I tell you, hardly any of them. You know, Jacinda Ardern, Judith Collins, you'll win. You'll walk over them because they're just nice people and they'll do what they're told. But I'm not gonna let you walk over them. I'm gonna tell everybody that you're bullies and that you're unjust. I'm someone who thinks that it sucks to watch a bully beating up on others. Events like this, these are not things New Zealand has ever experienced before. These kind of things don't happen here where we live. You know, we are a place that is peaceful, diverse, that has over 200 ethnicities and 160 different languages, and we celebrate that. And so for something like this to have happened here in our country, this is completely alien to us. Shall I take that one first, please? How am I? <laughs> Thank you for asking. I'm very sad. Now you know some of the young people who lost their lives on Friday. It's their names and their stories that we need to keep telling, and it's them that we need to honour. Yes, there will be interest in the terrorist who did this, but if I could request one thing, don't say his name. Don't dwell on who he is. The government has now got an amendment bill to the Arms Act. So this is a bill to uh, bring about the changes around semi-automatic firearms. I think this, um, the short time frame gives them less ability to get their gun buyers or ammunition buyers to influence Parliament. It normally takes about six months to make a law, uh, but doing it in nine days before politicians go on the Easter break is starting to look more like political theatre than public safety. You can get 140 rounds in a magazine. They're like a round thing, like a Gatling gun. That stuff being sold, no, Madam Speaker, that's not OK for New Zealand, and we will stand against it. What do you say to concerns that the gun reform is moving quickly? Yeah, I'm interested that, that what's being picked up here is the process rather than the substance. Uh, if there were suggestions that we shouldn't be banning attack rifles or military-style automatic weapons, I'd like to hear those arguments. We don't have a, a Second Amendment. We don't have a constitutional right to keep and bear arms like the US. But at the same time, we don't have the polarised debate on guns that the US does. Where are you looking there, Dylan? Straight down in the gully, you can see them with a the naked eye. New Zealand has very much a, a village mentality. We're a small country, we're, we're a country of four and a half million people. We are almost unique in that we don't have big game predators. Mankind is the predator. The management tool for that wild animal control is the high capacity centre fire semi-automatic rifle. But firearms for self-defence isn't really part of our culture. I've heard that the NRA have made an approach to support firearms users in New Zealand by lobbying the New Zealand government it would polarise the debate. We don't want to polarise the debate. We want to stay moderate and work on solutions and work on maintaining that social licence. 
for people like us, it's, it's our life. It's what we do. It's our, our job. It's our, it's our business. It's our, it's our recreation and our pastime. And it's our life, really. And we don't want to lose that. So today is the uh, public hearing. So we've had around four and a half thousand emailed submissions through in the last day or so. Just only some people have been invited to come and give uh, submissions and they are the major stakeholders, uh, particularly those who have been involved in the gun industry, lobby groups, and uh, also gun sellers coming in today. Alrighty guys, the most important thing that we achieved today is that we're the reasonable and intelligent side of the debate. We can't get angry at them and we can't sound like nutcases. It's actually quite a privilege for our opinion to have been asked for for the first time ever in 40 years. Usually they look on a gun dealer as simply a money grabber willing to do anything. Mr. Tickle, you sold the gunman four guns. How is that sitting on your conscience? What's your message to the government today? At your last press conference, you refused to answer questions that you said were gun debate questions, but you said you'd be happy to discuss them later. Is, is this not the later time that you could discuss this? I do not my, believe my comments will be fairly treated by your channel. And if anyone's in any doubt, look at the coverage on the first day. When you spread terror, you are terrorists. Excuse, sorry, are you accusing yourself of spreading terror? Yes. Have you had any media training? Pardon me? Have you had any media training for the last 40 years, years of it? Go on, underestimate me. That'll be fine. Uh, we have a very important piece of legislation to consider in front of us. We will get started straight away. Uh, good morning, my name's Joe Green. I chair the Firearm Safety Council of Aotearoa New Zealand. We express concern about the speed that the amendment's been introduced. This is a photo <coughs> of 74 Uzis imported by a collector on the idea that these were to be used for props. These were all operable firearms. Hunting and Fishing New Zealand broadly support the purpose of the Arms Amendment Act. Whatever reasons might be brought to bear for not supporting this legislation can never outweigh the 50 reasons we carry with us today. Our next uh, submission is from uh, Gun City. We have David Tipple and Nicholas Payne. Rushing this good feel law is causing division. It is bad law and it will result in serious injustices. It takes away rights that don't need to be taken. There are livelihoods at stake here. Some contractors can't afford the next gun until the seized gun is paid for. Um, so Mr Tipple, thanks for coming today and your submission. So do you believe that ammunition to buy ammunition, one should have to have a firearms licence? Yes, and that's the law, Miss. Mm. And magazines? And magazines, I believe that uh, uh, large capacity magazines should always have been regulated and they were not. And they, they were not? And you believe that they should have? Now we can see they should have. This person turned his A-category semi-automatic into an E-category by illegally fitting the large magazine. Which he got from? Don't know. Okay. Not from us. Not from you? No. Uh, um, you're sitting here facing the people who just submitted to us before you, who you heard. How would you go about 
um, explaining and justifying that the right to own these military style semi automatic weapons, and it states that your right to sell and profit for them, is a more important right than their right to feel safe in the wake of what has happened. Uh, well, it's very clear, Michael. Uh, nobody will ever be completely safe from a lone madman who is determined to, to cause murder. This wasn't about killing people, this was about dividing people. You do not think the attack was about killing people? I think that his motive, as he stated in his manifesto, was about <laughs> causing division, and he most certainly used killing people to do it, but he said that he could have killed more people with other devices. Sorry. David Tipple says it could cost the government up to $700 million. Would you be prepared for that? Uh, forgive me for not taking uh, advice from David Tipple. Uh, again, we have a quantum, a range that's being provided. Again, the point is, regardless of the number that are in circulation, our goal is to get as many as we can out of circulation. In an unprecedented court appearance, three weeks after the attacks, Brenton Tarrant was beamed into the High Court in Christchurch via audio-visual link. For many families of the victims, it was their first opportunity to see the 28-year-old accused gunman. He doesn't look like he is upset or something. He, he looks like very normal. He killed 50 people and he doesn't look like he bothered anything, you know? I didn't see any emotion on his face. Why was it important for you to come here today? Of course, um, it's, it was important because he has been killed so many of friends whom I used to see every Friday in the mosque. So I want to see how he feels after killing 50 people, innocent people. It was frustrating, it was very frustrating. Never, never thought it would happen to New Zealand. I'm not the same person I used to be. Some of my friends, they, they, they said they recovered a lot. They, they are not feeling they can sleep, they can eat. But I don't know what happens to me. Maybe I saw from very closely, it was not even one meter, it's less than that. So many has been killed in front of my eyes. An historic night at Parliament tonight as we go to air. MPs are rushing through changes to our gun laws that are set to pass in the next few hours. I can recall very vividly the moment I knew that we would need to be here doing what we are doing right now. I was very early on in a briefing with the Commissioner of Police where he described to me the nature of the attack that had occurred in Christchurch. I could not fathom how weapons that could cause such destruction and large scale death could have been obtained legally in this country. I could not fathom that. And I have to reflect, Mr Speaker, that when I visited the hospitals and the victims, <clears throat> that none of them had just one gunshot wound. I struggled to recall any single gunshot wounds. In every case, they spoke of multiple injuries, multiple debilitating injuries. Mr. Speaker, we are ultimately here because 50, 50 people died and they do not have a voice. We in this house are their voice. And today, Mr. Speaker, we have used that voice wisely. The eyes are 119, the nose are one, 